Welcome back to the deep dive. Today we're getting into something really interesting, PP405. It's an investigational treatment for uh, androgenetic alopecia, AGA, you know, common hair loss, comes out of UCLA Research, now with Pelage Pharmaceuticals, and it's making some waves. Our mission today, help you understand why this might be more than just another option. People are talking about actual hair regeneration, not just uh, slowing things down. So what's the big deal here? Well, yeah, that's the core of it. For years, treatments have mostly been about, you know, hitting the brakes on hair loss or keeping what you have. The excitement around PP405 is this idea of potentially um, reversing the process somewhat, waking up those dormant hair follicles to actually start a new growth cycle. It's a different goal, not just maintenance, but maybe restoration. Okay, restoration. That's uh, definitely the holy grail for a lot of people. So the mechanism, yeah. how does it actually do that? You mentioned dormant stem cells. So in AGA, the hair follicle stem cells, the HFSCs, they're there. Right. Yeah. Just inactive. Exactly. They're present, but they get stuck in this uh, quiet phase, this quiescent state. They just don't kick off a new hair cycle properly. PP405 is a topical treatment, a small molecule, and it works in a pretty clever way. It inhibits something called the mitochondrial pyruvate carrier, or MPC. MPC. Yeah. Yeah. Think of it like a gatekeeper controlling pyruvate, which is a key fuel source, getting into the mitochondria of the cell's power plants. By blocking that specific gate... PP405 makes the cell switch gears metabolically. It forces it down a different energy path. Precisely. Instead of processing pyruvate in the mitochondria, the stem cells start producing more lactate. And it turns out this increase in lactate acts as a really important signal. It basically tells those sleeping stem cells, hey, time to wake up yeah. and initiates a new normal hair growth cycle. And a real significant point here, this whole process is non-hormonal. Non-hormonal. That's a key distinction from, say, finasteride. A major distinction, yes. It sidesteps those hormonal pathways entirely. And this wasn't just stumbled upon, right? There was some serious science behind translating this discovery involving people like Dr. Lowry, Dr. Christoph, Dr. Young at UCLA. Absolutely. It was a fantastic example of cross-disciplinary work. You had experts in stem cells, metabolism, chemistry. They put the pieces together identified this metabolic switch, and then actually designed a molecule, PP405, to target it for hair growth. Real bench to potential bedside stuff. Okay, so the science sounds compelling. How did it actually perform when they tested it on people? Pellage showed some phase 2A data recently. What did that look like? Safety first, maybe? Yeah, the safety profile looked excellent in that phase 2A trial. It was well tolerated. And crucially, they found no detectable systemic absorption. So the drug seems to stay right there on the scalp where you apply it minimizes risks of side effects elsewhere in the body, and importantly, no serious adverse events were reported. Good. Very good. And efficacy, did it actually grow hair? That's the exciting part. After only eight weeks, which is quite fast, 31% uh, of the men in the trial who had more significant hair loss, yeah. they saw a greater than 20% increase in hair density. Mm -hmm. And that was statistically significant compared to the placebo group, where the increase was, well, 0%. 31% saw over 20% increase versus zero. <laughs> That's quite a difference in just two months. But what kind of increase are we talking about? Is it just making existing thin hairs look a bit thicker? Or? That's where the regenerative claim comes in. They reported observing growth of new terminal hair, so the thicker mm. pigmented hairs, right. in the areas that were previously bald or only had that fine vellus hair. So the implication is, yes, it might actually be creating new density by reactivating those dormant follicles, not just improving what's already there. Hmm. Okay. New terminal hair growth. That's significant. So let's put this into perspective for someone listening. Someone may be exploring your options right now. How does PP405 potentially compare to the mainstays like minoxidil or finasteride? It's really offering a different approach. Let's compare. Finasteride works hormonally, blocking DHT. It's mainly for men and carries those well-known risks of systemic side effects like sexual dysfunction or mood changes for some. Minoxidil is non-hormonal, works partly through vasodilation, kind of extending the growth phase. It's more about maintenance, slowing things down, and can be used by men and women, but it doesn't really target regeneration in the same way. Right. And PP405? PP405 uses this metabolic reprogramming. It's non-hormonal, which is a plus. The goal is explicitly regeneration. And based on this early data, no systemic side effects. So it could potentially be an option for both men and women, maybe especially those worried about finasteride's side effects. So it could potentially lower the barrier for treatment, maybe encourage people to act earlier when those dormant follicles are still, you know, salvageable. 
That's certainly the hope. Early intervention is always key in AGA. I think overall, many see PP405 as possibly the most significant uh, scientific step forward in treating AGA medically in quite some time. The potential shift from maintenance to actual restoration is huge. Okay, but let's manage expectations too. Where are we in the process? Right. Cautious optimism is needed here. This is early data phase 2A. Promising, yes, but from relatively small groups over a short time. The real test will be the larger, longer-term Phase 3 trials. Pellage is planning those for 2026. If all goes well, you might see it on the market maybe somewhere between 2028 and uh, 2032. But those larger trials are absolutely necessary to confirm everything. Okay, so still a ways off, but definitely something to watch. Which brings us to a final thought for you, the listener. PP405 sounds incredibly hopeful for the future, right? But here's the thing. If you're dealing with progressive hair loss now, waiting several years for a potential future treatment, well, you might lose more ground. You could lose the very follicles that something like PP405 might eventually be able to save. So the question to ponder is, what's your strategy today to preserve those follicles for whatever treatments tomorrow might bring? Something to think about.